Now, in this lecture, we will find the radius of the small circle. In the drawing, we have square ABCD. We know that one side of square ABCD equals to 8 units. And inside square ABCD, we have two circles. The radius of this big circle equals to 2R. And the radius of this small circle equals to R. And we want to find out the value of R. So, before I solve the question, I will present to you two new rules. The first rule, rule number one, states that a tangent to a circle is perpendicular to the radius drawn to its point of tangency. So I will read all number one again. All number one states that a tangent to a circle is perpendicular to the radius drawn to its point of tangency. So, what is the meaning of rule number one? The meaning of rule number one is that if we have this circle and uh, suppose that the center of this circle is at this point, point O, and uh, we also have a tangent to this circle actually tangent AB this tangent is tangent to this circle at this point we will define this point as point M So, if we have a radius that is drawn to the point of tangency, that is uh, to say point M, this is the radius that is drawn to the point of tangency, that is to say point M, then the tangent AB is perpendicular to that radius, that is to say this angle is a right angle, it equals to 90 degrees, and this angle is also 90 degrees, it equals to a right angle. It is a right angle, it equals to 90 degrees. So whenever you have a radius that is drawn to the point of tangency, like in this drawing, this radius is drawn to the point of tangency, that is to say point M, then the tangent AB is perpendicular to this radius, that is to say this angle is 90 degrees and this angle is also 90 degrees. Okay? So, a tangent to a circle is perpendicular to the radius drawn to its point of tangency. Whenever we have a tangent and the tangent and the point of tangency is like in this example for at point M 
and the radius is drawn to the point of tangency, that is to say point M, then the tangent will be perpendicular to this radius, that is to say this angle is 90 degrees and this angle is also equal to 90 degrees. Okay, so that is all number one. And we also have all number two. Rule number two states that if from one external point Two tangents are drawn to a circle. Then they have equal lengths. So I will read one number two again. One number two states that if from one external point two tangents are drawn to a circle, then they have equal length. So what is the meaning of rule number two? The meaning of rule number two is that if you have the circle and from external point for example this point point P is an external point to this circle why because point P is not inside this circle and nor on this circle but it is outside Point P is located outside this circle, therefore point P is defined as external point in relation to this circle. So if from point P we draw two tangents to this circle, so actually this will be the first tangent for the circle, we will define the touching point between the tangent and the circle as point A. So, actually, the length of tangent, uh, this tangent is, is actually AP. And we will draw a second tangent to this circle from point P. find the touching point between the second tangent to the circle is point B. So here the length of this second tangent is actually PP. And according to rule number two, the lengths of those two tangents are equal to each other, that is to say BP equals to AP. Okay, the lengths of those two tangents that are drawn from external point uh, to this circle are equal to each other. So whenever you draw two tangents from an external point uh, 
of a circle, then the Linux the length of those two tangents will be tangents will be equal to each other. So for in this example the length of this tangent the first tangent is PA or AP and it equals to the length of the second tangent that is actually PB or BP. So AP equals to BP uh, so actually that is the meaning of rule number two. So if for one external point uh, two tangents are drawn to a circle, then they have equal lengths. Whenever you draw two tangents from one external point to a circle, then the lengths of those two uh, tangents will be equal to each other. Okay? So, in the next step, we will define the center of this small circle as point P, and we will define the center of this big circle as point Q. And we join together points P and A by a straight line. Then, actually, here we have we define the touching point between tangent BC in this small circle is point L and uh, here we have this radius radius PL of the, this small circle is drawn to the point of tangency that is to say point L therefore the tangent BC is perpendicular to this radius according to rule number one that is to say this angle equals to 90 degrees and this angle also equals to 90 degrees okay and we also know that all four angles of a square are right angles therefore Angle ABC is a right angle, it equals to 90 degrees. We will define the touching point between tangent AB and this small circle as point uh, E. And then we will join together points P and E by a straight line. Actually, line segment PE is the radius of this small circle because of the fact that line segment PE starts from the center of the circle, that is to say point P, and ends at point E, that is a point on this small circle itself, a point on the small circle itself, therefore PE is defined as the radius of this small circle, so it equals to R. Okay.
So P is the radius of this small circle. And again, we have rule number one. We have this radius that is drawn to uh, the point of tangency, that is to say, point E. Therefore, the tangent AB is perpendicular to this radius, that is to say, this angle is 90 degrees. And this angle also equals to 90 degrees. In the next step, we will define this point as point F, and uh, we will define the touching point between tangent AEF and the small circle as point G. Then we will join together points P and G by a straight line. Line segment GP is the radius of this small circle because of the fact that uh, line segment PG starts from the center of this small circle, that is to say from point P, and ends at point G, that is a point on the circle itself. Therefore, GP is the radius of this small circle, that is to say it equals to R. And according to rule number one, because of the fact that, that this radius is drawn to the point of tangency, that is to say point G, then the tangent AF is perpendicular to this radius, that is to say this angle equals to 90 degrees, and this angle also equals to 90 degrees. So in the next step, we prove that the right triangle, triangle AEP, is congruent to the right triangle, triangle AGP. Okay, so we will focus on <coughs> triangle AEP, this right triangle. And triangle a, P, G. And we will prove that those two right angles can go into each other. Okay, so we will focus on triangles A, E, P and A, G, P. Uh, first of all, we know that side A, E of triangle A, P, G equals to side AG of triangle AGP. AE equals to AG. According to rule number two, AE equals to AG according to rule number two. We have here point A, that is ex external point in relation to this circle, or it is external point of this circle, and from point A we have two tangents to this small circle, tangent AE and tangent AG. And according to rule number two, whenever you draw two tangents uh, from external point, to a circle, then the lengths of those two tangents are equal to each other, that is to say AE equals to AG according to rule number 2. And we also know that PE equals to GP equals to the radius of this small circle equals to R. PE equals to GP equals to the radius of the small circle, that is to say equals to R. Okay, and we also have here a common side, PA is a common side, it belongs to both triangles, so PA 
equals to PA is the common side that belongs to both triangles. So PA equals to PA as the common side. So we actually proved that all three sides of the right angle AEP are correspondingly equal to the older three sides of triangle APG. Therefore we proved that those two triangles can point to each other according to side 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 rule. So I write it down. Triangle the right triangle, triangle AEP is congruent. This is the sign of congruent to the right triangle APG according to according to side 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 rule. So what is side 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 all? Side 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 all is that if you prove that all sides of one triangle are corresponding equal to all the sides of the other triangle, then you prove that those two triangles can go on to each other according to side 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 all. Okay, and from the fact that those two triangles can go on to each other, we will conclude that those two angles are equal to each other according to the rule that corresponding angles in congruent triangles are equal to each other. That is to say, angle EAP, this angle, equals to angle GAP, this angle, okay, angle. EAP equals to angle GAP and if we define angle EAP as alpha then angle GAP also will be equal to alpha according to the rule uh, because of the fact that they are equal to each other. Okay, so we found out that angle EAP equals to angle GAP, and according to our definition, it equals to alpha. And uh, actually, we will focus in the next step, we will focus on quadrilateral PLEB. This quadrilateral, quadrilateral PLEB. Again, we'll focus on quadrilateral PLEB, this small quadrilateral in inside quadrilateral PLEB we have three right angles, one, two, and three. And the sum of three right angles is 90 times 3, 270 degrees. So the sum of those two three Right angles is 270 degrees. We will define the size of this fourth angle as angle Z. And we have a rule that states that the sum of the angles in any quadrilateral equals to 360 degrees. That is to say, the sum of those three angles plus the size of the fourth angle must be equal to 360 degrees according to the rule that I mentioned. So, we can write down that the sum of the three angles that is 200, 
70 degrees plus the size of the forefinger must be equal to 360 degrees. Okay? We will subtract 270 degrees from this equality. We will get that angle Z equals to 90 degrees. Angle Z equals to 360 degrees minus 270 degrees. That is actually 90 degrees. So angle Z is the right angle. It equals to 90 degrees. So we will write here that this angle is a right angle. It equals to 90 degrees. So actually, we found that all angles, all four angles of quadrilateral P, L, E, B are right angles, they are equal to 90 degrees. Therefore, quadrilateral P, L, E, B must be at least a left angle because any quadrilateral that has four right angles it must be at least a rectangle, if not a square. If not a square, any quadrilateral that has four right angles must be at least a rectangle. So, I'll write it down. Quadrilateral P, L, E, B must be at least a rectangle. But the other one, P and E B, must be at least a rectangle because of the fact that it has four right angles. And we have the rule that says that the opposite sides of a rectangle are equal to each other. So. If we focus on rectangle PLEB, the opposite sides are equal to each other, that is to say PL equals to AEB. PL equals to EB. PL equals to EB. According to the rule that the opposite sides of a rectangle are equal to each other, but we know that PL equals to R. PL equals to R. Okay, we know that PL equals to R. From this, from this equality, we will conclude that BE or EB also equals to R. EB also, uh, EB also equals to R. EB also equals to R. And Also, PE equals to LB. PE is located in the opposite side of LB, therefore, they are equal to each other. PE equals to LB. But we know that. We know that. PE equals to R. Okay. PE equals to LB because opposite sides and rectangle are equal to each other. But we also know that PE equals to R. So from this equality, we will conclude that LB also equals to R. LB equals to R. will be equals to R. So actually, we found out that quadrilateral PLEB is a square because it has all of its sides are equal to each other. So therefore, quadrilateral PLEB is a, a square. Okay, in the next step, we will find out the size of line segment AE.
Okay, we know that AB equals to 8 units. It's a, it's a, it is giving us the question. AB equals to 8 units. AB equals to 8 units and EB equals to R. So what is the size of AE? AE equals to AB minus EB. Again, AE equals to AB minus EB. I will write it down. AE equals to AB minus EB. Okay, AE equals to AB minus EB. AB equals to AB minus EB. But we know that AB equals to 8 units and EB equals to R, so actually we found out that AE equals to 8 minus R. AE, this line segment, equals to 8 minus R. Okay? And uh, again, we have rule number 1. We will define this the uh, touching point between tangent AE and the big circle as point O. And we have this radius that is drawn to the point of tangency, that is to say point O. Therefore, the tangent DA is perpendicular to this radius, that is to say this angle equals to 90 degrees and this angle also equals to 90 degrees. And we also know, I already mentioned, that all four angles inside the square are right angles. Therefore, angle ADC, this angle, is a right angle. It equals to 90 degrees. We define the touching point between tangent DC and the big circle as point N. Then we we'll join together points Q and N by a straight line. Actually, Q N is the radius of this big circle because of the fact that line segment Q N starts from the center of this big circle, that is to say, from point Q and ends at point N, that is a point on uh, the big circle itself. Therefore, Q N is the radius of the big circle, that is to say, it equals to 2R. And again, we have all number 1. The radius QN is drawn to the point of tangency, that is to say, point N. Therefore, the tangent DC will be perpendicular to this radius, that is to say, this angle equals to 90 degrees, and this angle also equals to 90 degrees. Again, we will repeat on the same process as we did in this quadrilateral PLEB. In quadrilateral DNOQ, we have three right angles, and the sum of them is 270 degrees. And uh, the sum of the angles in any quadrilateral equals to 360 degrees. So, in total, the sum of uh, the four angles inside quadrilateral DAOQ must be equal to 360 degrees, that is to say 270 degrees plus the size of this angle must be equal 
to 360 degrees. So this angle must be equal to 90 degrees in order to complete the sum of the angles in quadrilateral D N on Q to 360 degrees. So this is a right angle, it equals to 90 degrees. Okay. It is exactly the same thing that we did in this small quadrilateral. Therefore, I uh, did it shortly because it is exactly the same process. Okay. So in quadrilateral D and O Q we have four right angles and any quadrilateral that has four right angles must be at least a rectangle. Okay, so quadrilateral D N O Q must be at least a rectangle. And we know that the opposite sides of a rectangle are equal to each other. That is to say, dn equals to q to oq. dn equals to oq. But we know that oq equals to 2r. Therefore, dn must be also equal to 2r because they are equal to each other. And we also know that qn equals to do. Because, because opposite sides in a rectangle are equal to each other. Therefore, NQ equals to DO, but NQ equals to 2R. Therefore, DO must be also equal to 2R because of the fact that DO equals to NQ. So, we found out actually that quadrilateral DN OQ is not a rectangle but a square. Okay, so uh, in the next step we will join together points Q and A by a straight line. And we define the touching point between tangent A F to the big in the big circle as point S, and then we will join together points Q and S by a straight line. Actually, Q S is the radius of this big circle because of the fact that line segment QS starts from the center of the big circle that is to say from point Q and ends at point S that is a point on the big circle itself therefore QS is the radius of this big circle that equals to 2R and again we have rule number one we have this radius QS is drawn to the point of tangency, that is to say point S. Therefore, the tangent AF will be perpendicular to this radius, that is to say this angle is a right angle, it equals to 90 degrees. And this angle is also a right angle, that equals to 90 degrees. Okay. So, in the next step we prove that those two right angles can go into each other. So we will focus on triangle AQS and triangle AQO. So I repeat again, we will prove that triangle AQS can go into triangle AQO. So first of all, we know that AS 
equals to AQ, AS equals to AQ, according to rule number two. AS equals to AQ according to rule number two. Why? Because we have here external point A. Point A is external point in relation to this big circle. And from the external point A, we have two tangents to this big circle. Tangent AS and tangent AO. And according to rule number two, whenever you have two tangents from external point of a circle, they are equal uh, in their lengths. So that is to say, AS, that is the length of tangent AS, is equal to AO, that is the length of tangent AO. Okay? So AS equals to AO, according to rule number two. And we also know that QO equals to QS equals to the radius of the speak circle that is 2R. QO equals to QS equals to the radius of the big circle that is actually 2R. QO equals to QS equals to the radius of the big circle. And uh, we also have here a common side. QA is a common side, it belongs to both triangles, so QA equals to QA. It's a common side that belongs to both triangles. Again, QA equals to QA as the common side. So we actually proved that all three sides of the right triangle AQS, 1, 2, 3, are corresponding equal to all the three sides of the right triangle AQO. Okay? Therefore, those two right triangles can go into each other according to side, side, side rules. So I write it down. So the right triangle AQS congruent, again this is the sign of congruent, to the right triangle, triangle AQO. According So side 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 all. Okay, and from the fact that those two right angles can go into each other, we will conclude that those two angles are equal to each other according to the rule that corresponding angles in can go into angles are equal to each other. So I will write it down that angle Q A S this angle is equal to angle Q A O. This angle and if this angle angle QAS equals to beta, then angle QAO will be also equal to beta because of the fact that those two angles are equal to each other. So we found out that angle QAS equals to angle QAO and both angles are equal to beta according to our definition. Okay. So, I actually mentioned the rule that all four angles 
in a square are equal to each other, so actually angle DAB equals to 90 degrees, it is one of the uh, ABCD uh, angles, one of ABCD, of square ABCD angles, so angle DAB, this angle equals to 90 degrees, but this, it is from one side, it equals to 90 degrees. Okay, so angle DAB equals to 90 degrees if it's one side of a square, of it's one angle of a square. From one side, but from the other side, angle DAB consists of four angles, alpha, alpha, and beta, and beta. So angle DAB also equals to two alpha plus two beta. Two alpha plus two beta. So from this equality, we will conclude that 2 alpha plus 2 beta equals to 90 degrees. So equation number 1 will be that 2 alpha plus 2 beta equals to 90 degrees. Here we will divide equation number 1 by 2 and we will get that alpha plus beta equals to 90 degrees over 2 is 45 degrees. We got that equation number 1 states that alpha plus beta equals to 45 degrees. But if alpha, if alpha plus beta equals to 45 degrees, then tangents alpha plus beta will be equal to tangents 45 degrees. Okay, very simple. So, tangents alpha plus beta equals to 45 degrees, but tangents 45 degrees is 1. So, question number 1 states that tangents alpha plus beta equals to 1. Actually, we have trigonometric identity from, for tangents alpha plus beta. According to the following trigonometric identity, the value of tangents alpha plus beta is it equals to tangents alpha plus tangents beta. Over one minus tangents alpha times tangents beta. Okay. So actually, we will use this homomorphic identity. We will substitute tangent alpha plus beta in equation number one by this expression that equals to tangent alpha plus beta. So we we'll do it now. So actually. Tangents alpha plus beta equals to tangents alpha plus tangents beta. Over one minus tangents alpha times tangents beta. So tangents alpha plus beta equals to 1. So we substitute that tangents alpha plus beta in equation number 1, this equation, by this expression that equals to tangents alpha plus beta. So this expression means that tangents alpha plus beta equals to, to 1. Okay? In the next step, we will calculate the values of tangents alpha and tangents beta from the drawing. If you focus on the right triangle, triangle AEP, this right triangle,
Und jetzt weiter eingeben, dann geht es einfach. Ich was zu PI oder AI. I will repeat again. In the right way, I get AEP, then I get some part equals to PE over AE. Okay, but what is the value of PE? PE equals to R, the radius, the radius of the small circle over AE. We have already found out that AE equals to 8 minus R. So in total, we got that tangent alpha equals to R over 8 minus R. So we actually found out the value of tangent alpha. Tangent alpha equals to R over 8 minus R. In the same way, we find out the value of tangent beta when we focus on the right angle, tangent AOQ. So in the right triangle, triangle AOQ, tangent beta equals to QO over OA. I will repeat again, in the right triangle, triangle AQO times beta equals to QO over QA. But what is the value of QO? From the drawing you can see that the value of QO is 2R and the value of OA we don't have the value of OA so we will calculate it now. We will calculate the value of OA. We know that dA equals to 8 units and dO equals to 2R. To so what is the value of OA? OA actually equals to dA. OA equals to dA over dO. Again, OA equals to dA minus DO. OA uh, minus DO equals uh, actually OA OA equals to DO minus again OA equals to DA minus DO. So actually from the drawing we can see that OA equals to DA minus DO. And what is the value of DA? The value of DA is 8 units and the value of DO is 2R, as you can see from the drawing. So in total we found out that OA equals to 8 minus 2R. 8 minus 2R Again, OA equals to 8 minus R 8 minus 2R Therefore, actually tangent alpha that equals uh, tangent beta that equals to O QO over OA, it actually equals to 2R over OA, that is 8 minus R. 8 minus 2R. Okay, so tangent beta equals to 2R over 8 minus 2R. We found out that tangent beta equals to 2R over 8 minus 2R. And we have already found out that tangent alpha equals to R over 8 minus R. Ok. 
Okay, so we have the values of tangents alpha and tangents beta. So in the next step, we will substitute tangents alpha and tangents beta in equation number one. This equation by the values that we found for tangents alpha and tangents beta. Okay. So we actually will get that. Here we have tangent alpha, but we have already found out that tangent alpha equals to r over 8 minus r. Plus tangent beta, tangent beta equals to 2r over 8 minus 2r. Over 1 minus tangent alpha times tangent beta. So tangent alpha is r over 8 minus r. And tangent beta is 2r over 8 minus 2r. All equals to 1. So, so we actually substituted tangent alpha and tangent beta by the values that we found out for tangent alpha and tangent beta, and we got this equation number one. So here we will take a common factor for we take out the common factor for these two expressions, and we also take out the common factor for these two expressions. So first of all. If we focus on the numerator, the common factor for these two expressions will be expressions will be 8 minus r times 8 minus 2r. And we will multiply r by 8 minus 2r in order to get this expression. As you can see, those two expressions are equal to each other. And then we will add 2r and we will multiply 2r by 8 minus r in order to get this expression. And this expression is equal to this expression. So we have a common factor in this expression and we now will focus on the denominator. Here we we'll substitute 1 by r, 8 minus r over 8 minus r, that actually equals to 1. And we will also substitute, uh, we will uh, multiply it by 8 minus 2r over 8 minus 2r, that actually also equals to 1. So actually this expression is 1. Then we will subtract from 1 r times minus r times 2r is minus 2r square. Okay? So here all equals to 1. So here we have the expression 8 minus r times 8 minus 2r in the numerator and we have 8 minus r times 8 minus 2r in the denominator so it will be cancelled those two expressions will be cancelled because when we divide those two expressions one uh, by each other they will be equal to 1 so what is left after we cancel those two expressions what is left is actually minus 2r plus 2r 8 minus r 
all that. It runs on times eight minus two. Minus two all square equals to one. So actually that is what is left after we cancel those two expressions. Here we will cause multiply this expression and we will get that. R eight minus two R plus two R eight minus R equals to eight minus R times eight minus two R minus two R square. So we first multiply this expression and we got this equation number one. In the next step, we will open the brackets in the both sides of equation number one and we will get that r times 8 is 8r, r times minus 2r is minus 2r squared. Plus 2r times 8 is 16 now. 2r times minus r is minus 2r square. Equals to 8 minus 8 is 64. 8 minus 2r is minus 16 now. Minus r times 8 is minus 8r. And minus r times minus 2r is plus 2r square minus 2r square so first of all we have here plus 2r square minus 2r square is 0 so those two expressions will get cancelled and what is left after we cancel the, those two expressions is uh, so here we have 8r plus 16r is 24r And we have minus 2 r square minus 2 r square is minus 4 r square. Equals to 64. Minus 16 r minus 8 r is minus 24 r. So here we will subtract. 24R from this equation number 1 and we will get that minus 4R square equals to 64 minus 48R. So we will add 4R square to this equation and we will get that 4R square minus 48R plus 64 equals to zero. So we have here a quadratic equation. We will divide this quadratic equation by four and we will get that r square minus 12r plus 16 equals to zero. So we got This quadratic equation, actually, the general formula for a quadratic equation is ax squared plus bx plus c equals to zero. Here, a, b, and c are the coefficients of this quadratic equation. And x is the variable that we are looking for, and we will find out the value of x according to a special formula for x. 
the following formula is for x in order to find out the values of x, x equals to minus b plus minus root of b squared minus 4 times a times c over 2a. When a, b, and c are the coefficients of this general quadratic equation, and x is the variable that we are looking for, okay? So, in our specific quadratic equation, the variable x is actually r. So, x equals to r, and the coefficients a, b, and c are as follows. a equals to 1, b equals to minus 12, and c equals to 16. So, we will put this data inside this uh, formula in order to find out the value of the values of R. That is the radius of uh, the small circle. So, x equals to R. So, we have here R that equals to minus B. B equals to minus 12. So, minus minus 12 is 12 plus minus root of b squared, b is minus 12, minus 12 squared is 144, minus 4 times a, a is 1, 4 times 1 is 4, so we have minus 4 times 16 is minus 64, over 2 times a is 2, so we got that the radius of the big circle equals to 12 plus minus 144 minus 64 is 80, so in the root, inside the root we have 80 over 2. Okay, so R equals to 12 over 2 is 6, and uh, 80 equals to 4 times 20, so I write it down. So we got that R equals to 12 plus minus root of 4 times 20. The root of 4 is 2. So we write it down. R equals to 12 plus minus 2 times root of 20 over 2. So here 12 over 2 is 6 and 2 over 2 is 1, so I'm writing down r equals to 12 over 2 is 6 and 2 over 2 is 1. Inside uh, the root we have 20, but 20 equals to 4 times 5. So, R equals to 6 plus minus, the root of 4 is 2, and inside the root we have only 5 left, so we have here 2 roots for R, or 2 solutions, the first solution is that R equals to 6 plus 2 times root 5 and the second solution is that r equals to 6 minus 2 times root 5 ok, we have here these two, two solutions but uh, the solution that r equals to 6 plus 2 root 5 is not correct solution because of the fact 
that the one side of square A, B, C, D equals to eight units. And the small circle is inside the square. So in order that the small circle will be totally inside the square, the radius of the small circle must be less than eight units, otherwise it will cut the square, it will not be totally inside this square. So actually the solution that R equals to 6 plus 2 times root 5 that give us a radius that is greater than 8 units is not correct answer because of the fact that the small circle is totally inside the square. So the radius must be less than 8 units. So this answer is incorrect answer and we are only left with the answer that r equals to 6 minus 2 times root 5 units. So in terms of numbers, the radius of the small circle equals to 1.53 units. And that is the answer to the question. I will repeat again, the radius of this small circle equals to either 6 minus 2 times root 5 units, or in terms of numbers, the radius of this big circle equals to 1.53 units. Okay? So now I will summarize the lecture. Actually, we wanted to find out the radius of this big circle. Uh, in the drawing we have a square, square ABCD, one side of square ABCD equals to 8 units, the radius of this big circle equals to 2R and the radius of this small circle equals to R and we want to find out the value of R. Okay, so in order to find out the value of R, I, first of all I presented to you two new rules. Okay. So, I presented to you two new rules. The first rule is that a tangent to a circle is perpendicular to the radius drawn to its point of tangency. A tangent to a circle is perpendicular to the radius drawn to its point of tangency. So, what is the meaning of rule number one? The meaning of rule number one is that Whenever you have a radius that is drawn to the point of tangency, that is to say point M, then the tangent AB will be perpendicular to this radius. That is to say this angle is 90 degrees and this angle is also 90 degrees. Okay, so if a radius is drawn to the point of tangency, then the tangent will be perpendicular to that radius. Okay, so this angle is 90 degrees and this angle is 90 degrees. So that is rule number one. And I presented to you also rule number two. Rule number two states that if from one external point two tangents are drawn to a circle, then they have equal lengths. So the meaning of rule number two is that what is external point? External point is a point it is in relation to the circle. External point is a point that is not located inside the circle, nor on the circle, but it is outside the circle. That is the definition of external point. Okay? So if from an external point of a circle, we draw two tangents to the circle, then the length 
of those two tangents will be equal to each other, that is to say PA will be equal to PB. So whenever you draw two tangents from an external point of a circle to that circle, then the lengths of those two tangents will be, tangents will be equal to each other. The length of the first tangent is PA and the length of the second tangent is PB, so according to one number two, PA equals to PB or AP equals to uh, BP. Okay? So that is one number two. And then, actually, defined the center of this small circle as point P, and we define the center of this big circle as point Q. Then we join together points A and P by a straight line, and uh, we join together points P and E by a straight line. Again, PE is the radius of this small circle, and the radius PE is drawn to the point of tangency, that is to say point E, therefore the tangent AB is perpendicular to this radius, that is to say this angle is 90 degrees and this angle is also 90 degrees. Then we join together points P and G, one side line, and first of all GP is the radius of this small circle because of the fact that it starts from the center of the small circle and ends at point G, that is the point of the circle itself. Therefore GP is the radius of this small circle and again we have rule number one, we have the radius, this radius is drawn to the point of tangency, that is to say point G, therefore the tangent AF is perpendicular to this radius, that is to say this angle is 90 degrees and this angle is also 90 degrees. And the same thing is true here, we have this radius that is drawn to the point of tendency that is to say point M, therefore the tangent PC is perpendicular to this radius, that is to say this angle is 90 degrees and this angle is also 90 degrees. And we also note that uh, all four angles inside the square are right, angle, are right angles, therefore this angle is a right angle that equals to 90 degrees. So here uh, we proved that those two right triangles can go into each other. Triangle AEP, this right triangle can go into can go into triangle AGP. Why? Because we have AE that equals to AG according to rule number two, because we have here from external point. Uh, of uh, the small circle, we draw two tangents to this small circle, tangent AE and tangent AG. According to rule number two, they are equal to each other. So AE equals to AG, and we also know that PE equals to GP equals to the radius of this small circle, and we have also side PA, it is a common side, it belongs to both triangles, so PA equals to PA as a common side, so we actually proved that all three sides of this right triangle are corresponding equal to all three sides of this right triangle, therefore we proved that the right triangle triangle AEP can go into the right triangle triangle APG according to side 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 rule. And from the fact that those two right triangles can go into each other, we conclude that those two angles are equal to each other according to the rule that corresponding angles that can go and triangles are equal to each other. So angle EAP equals to angle GAC, and if this angle is alpha, then this angle will be also equal to alpha because of the fact that those two angles are equal to each other. So we found out that angle EAP equals to angle GAP, and both angles are equal to alpha according to our definition. Okay, and then we focus on this, right, uh, on this for the lateral PLEB. In this for the lateral, we have three right angles. The sum of them is 270 degrees. And we have the rule that the sum of the angles 
in any quadrilateral arm equals to 360 degrees. That is to say, 270 degrees plus the size of the fourth angle that is Z must be equal to 360 degrees. And if we subside from this equality 270 degrees, we will get that Z equals to 360 degrees minus 270 degrees is 90 degrees. So we found out that this angle is a right angle. It equals to 90 degrees. Actually, we found out that all three angles inside quadrilateral PLEB are right angles. Therefore, quadrilateral PLEB must be at least a rectangle, if not a square. And we know that the opposite sides of a rectangle are equal to each other. That is to say, PL equals to EB. PL equals to EB, but we know that PL equals to R. PL equals to EB, but we know that PL equals to R. So from this equality, we will conclude that EB also equals to R. EB equals to R. And likewise, we also know that the opposite sides PE and LB in quadrilateral in the rectangle PL EB are equal to each other. So PE equals to EB. PE equals to EB, and uh, PE equals to LB, but PE equals to R. PE equals to LB, but PE equals to R. So from this equality, we will conclude that LB also equals to R. So LB also equals to R. Then we actually calculated the size of this line segment, line segment AE. The size of line segment AE is actually equals to AB minus AB. Again, AE equals to AB minus AB. AB equals to 8 units. AB equals to R. So AB equals to 8 minus R. AB equals to 8 minus R. Then we actually proved we connected together points A and Q by a straight line and we connected those two points together Q and S by straight line this angle equals to 90 degrees according to rule number one this angle also equals to 90 degrees according to rule number one and we proved that those two right triangles can go into each other AS equals to AQ according to rule number two from the external point A we have two tangents to the big circle A tangent AS and then tangent AO uh, so according to rule number two, they are equal to each other. And we also know that QS equals to QO equals to the radius of the big, this big circle that is 2R. And we have also QA that is a common side and belongs to both triangles. So QA equals to QA. So I actually proved that those two right triangles can go into each other according to side 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 rule. Therefore those two angles are equal to each other. And if this angle is better, this angle is also better. We know that all the four angles inside a square are right angles, so this angle equals to 90 degrees from one side, but from the other side, this angle consists of four angles. That is to say, 2A plus 2B equals to angle DAB. So we found out that angle DAB equals to four from one side to 90 degrees and from the other side equals to 2 alpha plus beta. So from this equality we will conclude that 2 alpha plus 2 beta equals to 90 degrees. We will divide equation number 1 by 2 and we will get that alpha plus beta equals to four, uh, 45 degrees because 90 uh, over 2 is 45. So alpha plus beta equals to 45 degrees. And uh, if alpha plus beta equals to 45 degrees, then tangus alpha plus beta equals to tangus 45 degrees. And tangus 45 degrees equals to 1. And we have this trigonometric identity for the value of tangus alpha plus beta. And we actually substitute the tangus alpha plus beta in equation number 1 by this expression that equals to tangus alpha plus beta. And we have this uh, expression. This is actually tangent alpha plus beta that equals to 1. Then we calculated 
the values of tangent alpha and tangent beta from the domain tangent alpha equals to r over 8 minus r tangent alpha equals to r over 8 minus r and tangent beta in this right angle equals to 2r to 2r uh, here is 2r and what is the size of OA? We have already found out that the size of a, OA is 8 minus 2r. We calculated it, but I forgot to write it in the drawing. It equals to OA equals to 8 minus 2r. So tangent beta equals to 2r over 8 minus r. Tangent beta equals to 2r over 8 minus r. Here. So we actually found out that tangent alpha equals to r over 8 minus r and tangent beta equals to 2r over 8 minus r from the drawing. Then we actually substituted the values of tangent alpha and tangent beta in uh, the in this equality in equation number one. We substitute tangent alpha and tangent beta in this equation number one by uh, the values that we found for tangent alpha and tangent beta. And we got this equation number one. We solved this equation and we got two uh, solutions. The first solution was that the radius of the small circle equals to six plus two times root five units, but the radius of the small circle cannot be greater than 8 units. This answer gives us radius that is greater than 8 units. And the radius of the small circle cannot be greater than 8 units because of the fact that the small circle is located totally inside the square. Therefore, the radius of this small square must be less than 8 units. Therefore, the only answer that is left is that the radius of this small circle equals to either 6 minus 2 times root 5 units or in terms of numbers the radius of this small circle equals to 1.53 units. Okay, I will repeat again the radius of this small circle equals to either 6 minus 2 times root 5 units or in terms of numbers the radius of this small circle equals to 1.53 units. Okay, thank you very much.